and they do occur and they will occur they do in in every society yeah yeah we need to to <coughs> excuse me pursue these people with our head more than our heart absolutely I mean, justice is important and, and if someone has done something terrible they belong behind bars but we need to do it fairly right. um on another topic, uh, during the Clinton years, we heard Janet Reno and others talk negatively about the, the so-called gun culture, mm -hmm. and that was something that always troubled me. I, I would have rather, I found it very offensive. I would, would have rather heard people talk about the, the crime culture or the, the culture of violence, and I'm wondering what your take is on that. I find it a, a troubling expression as well, and even more troubling because it has been adopted by many people who are firearms owners. Um, I have heard uh, many firearms owners um, speak about uh, needing to preserve our gun culture um, and that that somewhat baffles me because again are you talking about um, you know a, a shopkeeper guarding his store, are you talking about a, a woman who's a champion skeet shooter or target shooter uh, are you talking about a wild west show you know what is this gun culture um, it's an expression that I quite frankly knowing gun owners um, of every different socioeconomic status um, race gender sexual orientation um, profession that you can imagine can't understand what that phrase means the fact is the gun culture is all of American culture. All American citizens have the right to bear firearms, and many American citizens do. And American citizens are of every race, of every gender, sure. of every sexual orientation, of every profession, um, and their lifestyles vary widely. It, it's ironically, it's a very similar expression to the homosexual lifestyle, mm -hmm. which we've also heard a lot about. And um, I know. Uh, many gay and uh, gay men and, and lesbian women who again some of them are lawyers doctors um, uh, professional people others are crazy college mm -hmm. students living a, you know a, a wild life uh, others are just working in shops or working on farms or any again any american citizen they're just um they're just people um and there there isn't a there is no more a gun culture than there is a homosexual lifestyle. It's, yeah. it's just, um, these are images that I think out of fear initially some people create in order to characterize some set of people or behaviors in order to differentiate themselves from it. Um, and as I said, unfortunately with the term the gun culture, I'm hearing it being picked up by firearms owners. I, you know, probably live you know, we very differently than perhaps another firearms owner does. Um, you know, I probably a friend of mine has the expression that every single one of us, if we had to live a week in an, another person's house, would be horrified. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I think that's that's true among firearms owners as well. We're we're all over the board in our uh, sure. in our so-called culture, sure. uh, whatever that may be. Do you find it troubling um, or, or problematic at best it, when? When, when people try to label um, criminals as the gun culture, do you, and, and do you, I'm trying to uh, put this into to words here, but do, do you, or, let me just say, what, what are your thoughts on that? When, when you try to slap that kind of a label on someone, and then, but that label is also used in, uh, for another group. Right, and right. Um, again, by the gun culture, I mean, I don't even know for sure what you mean. Do you mean, um, that duck hunter with his, uh, yeah. you know, fifty thousand bucks worth of Land Rover and ten thousand dollars worth of shotgun, and um, yeah. or do you, you know, do you mean the, um, uh, you know, kids on the street flashing, uh, you know, big mean-looking guns of some sort? Um, I don't like labeling people, listing people, characterizing people as groups, um, even. Um, the expression criminals was one of the things is when we when we characterize a group of people at, by effectively being branded you know it's mm. the old scarlet letter brand where because you've done a particular thing you now are that thing you yeah. buy the label um, when you look at and once you once you do that and create a class you've created a class of people and it, that is a tool for the people who created the class again to differentiate yourself from them um, the fact with criminals there are some people who via 
by, by way of drug or alcohol addiction or by way of some violent characteristic are repeat violent criminals or live um, a lifetime of repeating uh, certain criminal behaviors. They are actually very, very few. They are a small percentage and a, and a very identifiable small percentage of uh, people who are convicted of crimes. Um, most crimes, um, again, are committed by fairly ordinary people via stupidity or mm. that one temptation or that one dumb thing that right, you did, you know, um, sure. the, you know, going to your brother's wedding and drinking too much and driving home and you knew you shouldn't have done it, mm -hmm. you know, well now you're a criminal. Yeah. Are you, you really want to have criminal banded? You, you committed a crime, but are you branded into a class for the rest of your life? Right. People commit crimes. I would love to find the statistic of what percentage of people actually have committed some crime. The best I've been able to come up with in Vermont, if you look at felonies and misdemeanors and fish and game violations and family court stay away orders, um, I think you're looking somewhere between 65 and 80 percent of the adult male population. So when you're talking about criminals mm. and when you get your head nodding saying, yeah, we should take mm. guns out of the hands of criminals, you're talking about most people. Right. You're talking about most people. Um, when I have a table at gun shows or um, I'm out shooting at clubs, people know, you know, I'm an attorney, and you would be surprised at how many people who work in our state government or mm. teach in the schools or have some professional job sort of come up to me and say, can I talk to you about something? You know, I have this conviction right. for whatever back when I was, you know, 19 or back in 1972 when I grew pot plants, you know, right. or whatever it may be. Um, and now it's however many years later, and um, now with electronic records for criminal histories, these things are coming up in yeah. many contexts. And um, so that brand, you know, instead of being a thing you put behind you, it now is that brand that's coming out in for closing you other avenues in it. your life, and you but can never quote, shake unquote, it. Normal, normal people make mistakes. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. We all make mistakes. And again, if you look at our Constitution, the reason all those criminal process protections are there is because our founding fathers recognized that crimes are the transgressions from the desired behavior of our society that we all make. We, you know, we all make those those transgressions. Almost everyone, mm -hmm. almost everyone has committed at least one crime at one point in their life, whether they've been caught it or not. Sure. I mean, just about everybody, not, I'm sure there's someone out there who hasn't, but just about everyone has exceeded the speed limit or mm -hmm. uh, engaged in a loud argument in public, which would be disorderly conduct, or, sure. or like I said, had a few beers and, and driven home, or as a 14-year-old kid ripped off a lighter from a convenience store. I mean, there are people who have not, right. certainly. Um, but there aren't a lot of them. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, getting into the topic of, of discrimination, mm -hmm. um, uh, what are some of the, the inter more interesting cases that you've been involved with? In the, when you speak about discrimination and gun ownership, um, I'm really blessed living in Vermont because firearms ownership is uh, is very much the norm. Hmm. Um, visitors to Vermont um, are always a little confused or taken aback at first because uh, we don't talk about sports. Um, you can always identify the tourist who walks into the store and says, oh, how about the big game last night? Nobody has any idea what they're talking about because they're talking about whether or not they got their deer. <laughs> yeah. So if you're visiting Vermont and you want to fit in, you walk in the store, you say, did you get your deer yet? Um, <laughs> because it's that big. <laughs> right. Or, <laughs> um, yeah. or if it's, if it's midsummer, it's, yeah, how are the, how are the brookies treating you, yeah. you know? It's, um, um, so firearms ownership and, and certainly the um, sportsman's um, issues are very much the, mm -hmm. the norm um, in Vermont. Um, but even in, in Vermont, um, in some areas, we do see um, not so much discrimination as um, um, those walls, I believe, of um, 
of, of fear or of misunderstanding, uh, more on the personal level, um, such as parents who will not let their children over to the house of a friend if they know that the friend has firearms in the uh, in the house. Mm -hmm. And I, I've run into situations at work too, um, where someone finds out you're a gun owner, and, and this is more in an urban, suburban mm -hmm. area like Eastern Massachusetts. Right. And people have never been exposed to that. And uh, I think it's a natural instinct, but their first in instinct is to think, "Wow, this guy's going to go postal any minute." Yep. Um, Again, that gets back to those preconceptions, um, and we need to let those folks know who we are. I think people always respond to things that are different from them with fear. Sure. Um, again, whether it's a person who is homosexual and that, that when someone learns of that, it really puts them off because it's different. Same thing our immigrant ancestors and new immigrants today go through um, because they're different. So people, people um, instinctively fear that was, which is different from themselves and, and tend to perceive of that as a threat um, one way or, or another. Um, the sad part about that is that many firearms owners are um, intentionally then not mentioning or almost hiding the, the mm. fact that, that they're a firearms owner. You know, do you, do you, do you wear the Leupold shirt or the <laughs> Smith & Wesson Academy shirt to work or do you, uh, you know, walking out the driveway say, oh no, I can't, I better not, I better not go in with that on, you know, people will think I'm, uh, I'm off the wall. Sure. Um, so again, it behooves us to um, explain our our sport or our hobby or um, our passion for for firearms um, and uh, re reach out to folks so that there's less of that fear half the battle is is getting to a point where you can engage someone in dialogue about it Maybe absolutely having them ask you questions hopefully yep. they would be interested in asking you questions yep. explain yourself one of the problems in Massachusetts again that we don't so much have in Vermont is uh, you, c you can't easily ask them to go out shooting mm. um, in Vermont um, I always ask anyone who um, gets into any sort of discussion with me or expresses some sort of trepidation about firearms if they've ever been shooting and would they like to to come out um, because of course not needing any kind of permitting and there being numerous places you can go uh, just gravel pits and people's farms you can go out and shoot on um, it's easy to get folks out to to uh, to shoot and interestingly enough many people you know, uh, frequently if someone will express that trepidation about firearms when you ask them, they'll say, no, they never have uh, sh gone shooting or they never have shot. And um, I say, look, why don't you come out one afternoon, you know, with me and the kids and, uh, you know, no no pressure. I'm not going to lean on you about it, right. but why don't you give it a shot? Because that way when you, when you talk about it, you'll at least have There's a basis yeah, they, to talk about it. They Sometimes it they go out and love it. Yeah, <laughs> Sometimes they go out and love it. People so, who weren't sure and then they end up loving it. Right, right. And it gives them the chance to see what it is and what it right. isn't. Um, if it's something you've grown up never doing, you say, why would a person want to do that? Um, it's, it's very alien to you. Um, yeah, so I get that a lot. So if you, if you can go out and uh, bust a few pigeons or uh, you know a, a few plink a few cans it's uh, sometimes it can be a pretty addictive uh, addictive hobby absolutely we've just got a couple of minutes left but I had a, a few questions I